I'll take this diamond ring. Oh. Now, which pin, Mike, the ruby or the diamond? Well, what's the difference? You take both. Oh, no, that's much too much. Both, please. <laughs> but that's all. Mike? Mike Galway? Eddie. Eddie Carr. Right. Eddie the scorekeeper. My yeah. gosh, how you been, Ed? Bev, Bev, I want you to meet a man that was the worst stickball player in the history of the 75th Street Dragons. <laughs> I know, Eddie. Huh? You know, I bet it's been 20 years I haven't seen you. Edward Mason Carr, certified public accountant. You must have a whole army of CPAs working for you. I've got none. In your bracket, you made a fortune this year. You mean Popeye Pussycat? That was a fluke. That was no fluke. It was an epidemic. I never knew you had this kind of talent. I got no talent. I was at a New Year's Eve party. I was loaded. I grabbed the ukulele and I made up a song to kid the stuff coming over the radio. And there was a gal there whose boyfriend managed some singing group, called themselves The Leftovers. <laughs> he liked it. They recorded it. And the whole world went crazy. You think you could write another one? Not a chance. <laughs> How much did you make, Mike? Close to a half million. You saved some for taxes. Oh, sure, plenty. I must have 40 grand left. <laughs> What's the matter? Eddie, I said I had $40,000. Your tax will be $300,000. You're kidding. For what? My agent, I can understand. He made all the deals, he gets 10%. But $300,000 for Uncle Sam? For what? He didn't write the song. He didn't sell the song. And until he shows me how he rates it, he doesn't get a cent. That's all. <laughs> Don't pay it, you go to jail. Well, I'm beginning to see his side of it. <laughs> Eddie, will he send me to jail? Well, not really. You can pay it out, but it'll take you 200 years. Did you have to spend it all? I happen to like nice things. And those nice things, they like nice things. You married? What, are you kidding? You're going to be. I am, wife. What are you talking about? Even I know a wife's only worth a $600 exemption. I'd have to marry 500 of them. We have a slightly more sophisticated way to handle it. Sit down, Mike. Eddie, I don't want to get married. Look, you only have to be married for a few days. Now, here's my plan. You gotta marry a girl who lost as much as you made this year. Now, if you marry her by December 31st, her losses cancel out any gains you made this whole year. That's kosher? It's a merger. Big corporations do it all the time. Tax-wise, what is marriage? It's a merger with orange blossoms. <laughs> what does the dame get out of this? Well, on January the 2nd, she divorces you. Then you give her half of the 40 grand. That's not bad wages for a few days of marriage. You know such a lady? No, but I'll find her. I know just the kind of figure to look for. One with nice, big, lovely, deductible losses. OK. OK. But first, uh, I've got one problem. Yeah, I know. I met her. But I'll handle her. Beverly's a good kid. She's a nice girl, but she has a cash register for her heart. And when I tell her I'm broke, she's going to ring up no sale. Honey, the party's over. We're going to have to break up. I'm only thinking of you, baby, nobody else. I'm broke. Baby, the old cupboard is bare. Beverly, I have no money. Beverly, I can't marry her. I'm going to marry somebody else. <laughs> Who is she? Beverly, baby, will you listen to me? 
Who is she? I don't know who she is. Oh, you ran an ad in the newspaper, and she's answering you by mail. <laughs> she, she hasn't been picked yet. She's not ripe. <laughs> I'm not picking her any car. The tax man is now. Will you relax just for a second? Beverly, listen. Eddie is going to find some dame who's lost as much money as I've made. We'll marry. We'll file a joint tax return for the year, and we'll get a divorce. It's a tax gimmick, that's all. And the dame is probably going to be some beat-up old battle ex of a businesswoman, so what are you worried about? Look, as soon as I get married, you and I will fly down to Miami for a couple of days. Hmm? How about it? Don't huh? touch me. Maybe I'm not a saint, but I don't go out with married men. Oh, get out of here. Beverly, please. Come on, get out of here. Beverly. Get out of here. Easy, now. Easy. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Get out. Hold on. Relax. Easy. Beverly. Get out. Yeah. Mike. I found her. I want you to rush right over here and meet your bride. Not so fast, Eddie. I'm not buying a pig in a poke. Now, what kind of a pig is she? <laughs> she she's perfect. Thousands in bad debts, two dry oil wells, and hoof and mouth disease. Delightful. No, 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 not her. Uh, the cows on her Nevada cattle ranch. Practically wiped her out. All right, Eddie, I'll grab a cab and I'll be right over. Thomas Ballard, he's on his way over. It's a deal, then. Well. I see. I'll be going now. Well, just a minute, Miss Ballard. You promised me to... marry him. But I won't be inspected by him. Now, please. If I had a taste for humiliation, I could go to my friends for money. Goodbye, Mr. Carr. Afraid you can't pass the inspection? <laughs> What shall I tell him? Nothing. I'll tell him. <laughs> Eddie, great. <laughs> Very good. Oh, she'll do just fine. You know, I couldn't have done better myself. <laughs> That's a deal. Miss uh, Ballard? <laughs> well, what's this? <laughs> what's this? Mm. What's that all about? Well, I guess so. <laughs> it's no deal. Forget it. It's all. <laughs> Very well. Okay. So you're gonna play hard to get, huh? <laughs> Boy, this marriage is gonna be something. Wrong, Mr. Galway. This marriage is gonna be nothing. <laughs> well, I think I'll leave you two kids alone for a few minutes. Have fun. You know, I like things to start off like this. It makes it more interesting. <laughs> and it helps when you're so beautiful. We are engaging, Mr. Galway, in the mating of your tax bill with my tax loss. And the government gets the pick of the litter. As individuals, we are nothing. You're being too modest, baby. And don't underestimate the opposition. Listen, we haven't met. Call me Mike. What do I call you? Don't call me. <laughs> I suggest we meet at the License Bureau on December 24th at 3 p.m. Shouldn't take more than a half hour. Does this bother you sticking out like that? <laughs> December 24, 3 p.m. I may be a little late, Christmas shopping. Are you sure you can spare the time? After the ceremony, we go our separate ways. Sleep in peace, baby. When it comes to women, I like mine alive. <laughs> 
married men, remember? I'm not a married man. Not till the clerk at the License Bureau pronounces me such at 3 p.m. on December 24th, which gives us three full days. You're a fast worker. A week ago, you didn't even know the girl. Now you know the time. I know the girl, too. Who? I'll tell you in there. Hmm. The Society, Virginia Ballard. <laughs> She's some beat-up bad lax of a businesswoman. <laughs> what has she got that I don't? Here we go again. <laughs> Fred Finchley, please. Oh, hello, Fred. This is Beverly Beaumont. I think I have a hot tip for your column, Fred. You know Mike Galway, the fellow that wrote Popeye Pussycat. This ring has been emblematic of endless love and devotion. Place the ring on the bride's finger, and as such, I trust it will symbolize your union. And now, by virtue of the authority vested in me as registrar in the city of New York, state of New York, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Let them go first. Hi. 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 Here comes the lovebirds now. Hey, uh, how soon are you planning to get a divorce? Kiss her for a picture, Mike, or isn't that part of the deal? Look, why don't you take her someplace else? Would you call this uh, loophole matrimony? Just keep it up, fellas, or somebody's gonna get decked. That won't help anything. All right, now, look, I, I know how you feel about Mr. and Mrs. Galway being celebrities and all that, but what do you say we let them get started on their honeymoon, huh? Where are they going? To a bank? <laughs> Eddie, what are you gonna do? Oh! Where are you going now? Well, with all this publicity, you two are going to have to live together. Live together? You didn't tell us that before. I didn't know about it before. <sighs> Just till the heat dies down. If you hadn't struck him... I... If, if. If the Pilgrims had shot a skunk instead of a turkey, it would have changed Thanksgiving pretty good. <laughs> Question. Why don't you just listen to me? The answer is no. Absolutely no. Okay, okay. Keep your shirt on. I intend to. That's one reason why I won't share your apartment. <laughs> we have to live together. Do you have any ideas? My apartment has a living room and a bedroom with a big, old-fashioned lock. Look, sister, if there's anything you don't need with me, it's a lock. <laughs> We have a check, please, doll. Must you call the waitress doll? Well, she is a doll. I had her belted you. And a simple solution to all your problems. Just belt somebody. Sure, the soup was too cold, the coffee was too cold. I'm surprised you didn't ask her to heat up the ice cream. <laughs> if you ever had to work for a living, you'd have some consideration for these people. I am working now at the most disagreeable job in the world. You want to call it quits? Go ahead. A ballot does not go back on a business agreement. That's something you wouldn't understand. <laughs> well, 
1450. Oh, that's seven and a quarter for your share plus tax and tip. <laughs> Strictly a business agreement. <laughs> Hello. Yes, Mr. Carr, we just got in. All right. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, Eddie. Are you two out of your minds arguing in a public restaurant? How'd you know about that? How did I know? I just got a phone call from the head waiter. It cost me 125 bucks to keep it out of the press. Listen, Eddie, we just can't stand each other. There are millions of happily married people who have the same problems. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Mike, and listen to me good. You gotta act like newlyweds in every way, otherwise we're all in a lot of trouble. All right, Eddie. I'll try my best. Listen, Miss Ballard. Eddie's really teed off at us. And you know, he's right. I mean, the man is absolutely right. From now on, you and I, well, we've just got to act like newlyweds. Newlyweds? In every way. And just exactly what does that mean, Mr. Galway? Oh, nothing naughty, heavens forbid. <laughs> no simple things like, well, instead of calling me Mr. Galway, why don't you call me sweetheart? Try it. Sweetheart. <laughs> That'll fool them. <laughs> All right. And I'll call you doll. Oh, no, you won't. Well, what about baby? No. Sweetie. Ugh. Kitten. Coodles, coddles, peaches, anything. There must be something. Well, to tell you the truth, I am partial to Pollywog. <laughs> Pollywog. It was my pet name when I was a little girl. Oh, I see. Well, that's fine. That's something I can call you and mean it. <laughs> now, don't run away, dear, because we have to face this thing. I mean, we just have to find a way to display some affection in public. Nothing serious, you know, holding hands, occasionally looking into each other's eyes. Oh, now, really? Yes, really. And we better rehearse it. Rehearse it. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, you're one cute pollywog. Sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I have to do it again. Sweetheart. Why don't you try it again? I thought it was rather good. Do you want to rehearse or do you want to make jokes? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be serious. All right. Pollywog, Pollywog, I can't wait until you grow up to be a real live frog. That <laughs> is over there. My bed is in there. That's right. Well, does it come out or do I go in? <laughs> All right, I see how it works. I can take care of it. Thank you. Very well. When I was a little girl, I used to dream about my wedding night. Sure wasn't anything like this. I always thought I'd marry a prince. I know how you feel. I always thought I'd marry a woman. Uh, oh, uh, there's uh, something else you want to know about that bed. Look, if there's anything I don't need, it's a bed tutor. There's a lock on the side of the bed that keeps it from doing that. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Hey, will you
drunk. Shut up. We're trying to sleep. Can't you keep it? I know. Hey, hey, what's this all about? Oh, well, these are old friends of mine, sweetheart. Um, uh, Bryce Coberly. Hi, Mike. Uh, Fran Goodrich. Uh, Gladys Hadwell. Guy Conway. Oh, and Cornell DeHaven. How are you? I'm Mike Galway. Now I know the papers are right. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Don't waste your time on him. He's just jealous, because he thought Ginny would wait for him forever. Oh, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to meet you. I mean, I really am. I think it must be absolutely wonderful to have such talent and to write a whole song like Popeye Pussycat. Oh, thank you. You did write the whole song, didn't you? I mean, uh, both the words and the lyrics. And the music, too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there we are. You know, Ginny, I'm surprised. You haven't changed a single stick of furniture in this apartment, have you? I'll bet there hasn't been an interesting development in the uh, bedroom either. <laughs> now that's what I call togetherness. <laughs> In a few months after you've had your divorce, we should really talk about putting our ethics together. Merry Christmas. Mm. Did you misplace this, Buster? <laughs> Sorry, fella. It's an old custom, kissing the bride. One of us really should, you know. You know you're a phony bum. Mike. You're a phony bum. Get out, I'm gonna belt this Mike, guy. if you will you so help me, I'll... Yeah. You'll what? Well, I'll... Yeah, you... you'll what? This I gotta hear. <laughs> Maybe she'll make you sleep in the living room. You know, I'm very fond of you. I really am. I'm glad you came. And I insist that you spend the rest of the night with us. In fact, if you were to leave now, I'd probably be nauseous. All right, friends. We've stood long enough against the tides of passion. Come along, Fran. Guy. Gladys. Bryce. Onward. Good night. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Mike. Oh, by the way, we're all going down to my place at Sands Point for the weekend. I'd like you two to come as guests of honor. I'll even let you use the De Haven honeymoon room. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Corny, but I'm afraid we can't. Wait a minute. I think it's a great idea. We'll be there. But, sweetheart... Pollywog, believe me, we'll love it. Expect us. Good. I'll see you Saturday. Good night. How dare you? I had very good reason. Yes, I saw. But you don't need a weekend for Bryce Coberly. A dime phone call will do. You know, you're even more stupid than I thought. Can't you see that by refusing that invite, it would be an omission that we're not really married? Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, that honeymoon room. It's a wall-to-wall -wall bed. Yeah, well, look, Pollywog. I got a lot of dough riding on this marriage, and I'll go to any extreme to save it. Even if it means spending a weekend in the same room with you. You have the brains of a... of an anteater. <laughs> and the manners of an ape. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mike. Oh. <laughs> what is it now? I want to apologize. I'm still asleep. <laughs> Mike. Mike. Um, you were right. About what? About everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, look. Why don't you miss them? I'd like to hear them all. <laughs> Come on. This is tough enough. You were right about accepting. It wasn't an invitation. It was a challenge. Hey. Hey, you've got guts after all. <laughs> we can't win this fight unless we do it together. Partner? Partner. Well, how about that? How many husbands and wives have become friends on their wedding night? <laughs> How about a cup of coffee, friend? You got a deal. <laughs> gonna make it or not? Well, of course you're gonna make it. You've got to. I hope so. Well, there's no question about it. You made all the right moves. You know, bad breaks like open mouth disease, they'll happen. Can't fight that. Well, good night, Mike. Anytime you want to wake me up for a session like this, feel free. <laughs> well, listen, it's, uh, you know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, so I'll just drop you off here at the door. You don't mind if I don't go in, do you? <laughs> good night, Polly Wong. Good night, sweetheart. and uh, I've been preparing a file on the case, Mr. DeHaven. But I'll need evidence. And evidence of intent is hard to pinpoint. Suppose I could supply such evidence right from the mouths of the conspirators. Oh, I'd be very grateful, Mr. DeHaven. I appreciate the public spirit that brought you here. Yes. And, uh, isn't there a little formality? Like 10% uh, of whatever you recover? <laughs> Yes, we have an arrangement for uh, paying informers. It's a horrible expression. Fortunately, it won't apply to you. A certain uh, Beverly Beaumont gave us an affidavit on December 23rd. Beverly Beaumont. They used to have hundreds of acres. No kidding. Mm -hmm. This is all they have left. That used to be the caretaker's cottage. Well, surprise. Hello, Corny. Come in. I'd uh, almost given you up. Well, I'm sorry we're late, but, uh, well, you know how it is. No, I uh, don't. <laughs> Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. I think I'll keep it for a minute. Thank you, sweetheart. What talent. <laughs> I'll uh, show you to your rooms. Well, here's our guest of honor. Where's Ginny? She's changing. She'll be down. We all know our guest of honor, Ginny's husband. Uh, Freddie Frothingham. Michael Gold. <laughs> 
Bryce, of course. Hi, Mike. Pour yourself a drink, Mike. You may need one before the evening is over. <laughs> Why don't you let me show you around the grounds? There's so much to see and so much more I'd like to find out about you. Well, I could use a little fresh air. Good. Won't you be cold? I hope so. <laughs> Ginny, you're a dream. Thank you. You know everyone, of course? Of course. Good evening. Mike is outside somewhere with Bryce. Oh, uh, <laughs> this is Charlie Eckert. How do you do, Mr. Eckert? Yes, it is, isn't it? Oh, he's hard of hearing. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's been helping me with some business deals. Oh. Charlie, this is Virginia Galway. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Certainly. How do you do, Mrs. Galway? I've been hearing a lot about you. I just want to tell you that I sympathize with your husband. I don't know what you mean. Uh, speak in here, dear. <laughs> I, I don't know what you mean. Well, I was referring, of course, to the common knowledge that you intend to get a divorce. Oh, but I just... <laughs> but, I, but I just got married. I know, I know, to save the outrageous taxes on your husband's income. I must say that's a brilliant idea. Until just a few years ago, Corny's family used to own all the land around here. It was just all the things. Excuse There's only me. one thing that interests me. How do you benefit, Mrs. Galway? I benefit very substantially, Mr. Eckhart. The same way all women benefit from marriage. <laughs> I'm going to borrow my wife. Oh, stay in chat, Mr. Galway. A little later. Thanks. <laughs> You're beautiful. You're an absolute knockout. Louder. They didn't hear you. It wasn't meant for you. It was meant for you. Thank you. Uh, shouldn't we sit down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess we better. <laughs> I'll share yours. Attention, everybody. Could I have your attention for a moment? I have a surprise for you, Mike. You see, fella, it seemed terribly unfair that I should enjoy the company of my old girlfriend, Ginny, unless I provided you with the company of your old girlfriend, Beverly Beaumont. Your predecessor. Hi, Mike. Weren't we supposed to be in Miami today? Well, that does it, Buster. Now you're gonna get it. You've been asking for this for a long, long time, and believe me, you're gonna get it. <laughs> But I'm afraid I'm to blame. Uh, you see, I didn't let him go. I'm terribly jealous. <laughs> well, actually, you know, Beverly, uh, Ginny has a lot to be thankful for to you because, you know, it's the girlfriend that slows the guy down so that the wife can throw the halter around his neck. A toast to girlfriends. Yeah, may they all become wives of somebody else. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, now, if you'll all pardon me a moment, I, uh, I have a little personal matter to attend to. to get you alone all evening. The way you controlled yourself was marvelous. Well, that was a pretty wild distraction you threw at me. Now, where'd you ever get that idea? Worked, didn't it? I wasn't gonna hit him. As mad as I was, I wasn't gonna hit him. I kept thinking, don't. Jenny doesn't want you to. Really? Really. Jenny. Jenny, I... Jenny, I, uh... I 
can't say those love words. But I'm thinking them all. And I'm feeling them. got into this marriage through the side door, I know that. But what difference does it make how we got there as long as we're there? I love you, Ginny. And I've never said that to another woman in my life. And I love you, Mike. More than I thought I could love anyone. Well, then we don't have to pretend anymore. Oh, 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 Mike. Mike, put me down. We're married. I know, but that's what's wrong. Wrong. Put me down, Mike. Darling, let's give ourselves time to think. Usually, when people fall in love, they stop and ask, is this what I really want for the rest of my life? And they have dates, and they go to parties, and they talk, and get to know one another right down to that long walk to the altar, and they can still change their mind. We're different. Nothing stands between us, except our own will and judgment. I love you, Mike. But it's a surprise that I do. I need time, darling. Because if we're going to be married, and I mean really married, I want it to be right and forever. You're right. As much as I hate to admit it, you're right. Now, you sleep in the bed, and I'll sit up and watch you. I wouldn't sleep. Oh, no, dearest. It's, I'm responsible for the delay. No. You need the sleep. I'm so full of love. I don't need sleep. Look, I'm not sleeping in that bed, no matter what you say. Neither am I. OK, we both stay up. OK? with our arms folded, staring at one another. <laughs> hey, I know what. I'll sleep in the gatekeeper's lodge. Oh, no. I want to. Yes. I want to. I really want to. want me to go. <laughs> right now, I trust you more than I trust myself. Recorder on all evening. Sooner or later, they'll slip. You're an optimist. I don't need much evidence. Beverly's affidavit will show Galway's intent, and I'll testify I saw the folding bed made up in the living room. No, that means nothing. Did you sleep in the living room on your wedding night? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> I hired you to get evidence. I expect you to get it. Well, I'm an investigator, not a, not a magician. What's your angle? What are you in this for? Blood. I thought there was something personal in it. What was that?
Oh, honey. I knew you'd manage a visit. I don't know if you're more than Bryce, you're wasting gas. Oh, we're gonna play games. We're gonna play hard to get, is that it? <laughs> Nice to know there's somebody that much in love in this world, even if it slams the door on me. Well, thanks, Bryce. Listen, Beverly's room, it's right next door, right? Right. Goodbye, Mike. What's the matter with you? Don't you darling me, you alley cat. Have you made all your calls for the night? What? I went looking for you like a fool, and I found you in every bedroom in this house. But I can explain that. Not to me, you don't. In a business arrangement like ours, you don't have to explain your private life. Shh, Jenny, shh. Oh, don't shh. worry, don't worry. I'll keep my part of the arrangement. You'll save your taxes, but I'm fighting for divorce on New Year's Day. Please, just relax a minute. Would you do go! Please? Ginny, do you need any help? Oh, Corn, you were absolutely right. I made a dreadful mistake. I think we should all go to our rooms. Wait just one moment, please. Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm has a few words to say. Uh, not just now, please, Bryce. Now, Ginny. I'm not interested. Shut up, Ginny. Mike came into my room to avoid being seen by Corny and his paid private investigator, Mr. Eckhart. I kissed him all right. Goodbye, when he told me how much in love he was with you. Jenny, that's the truth. <laughs> but it's funny, huh? You think that's funny, right? Uh, oh, that's my funny, God. right? <laughs> Punching isn't going to help anything. I'm just so confused. When you left Bryce's room, you went to Beverly's. Yes, that's right. Well. Well, huh? Well, what? My <laughs> I went to Beverly's room to tell her off. Ginny, let me take you to your room. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a puny lie. Why? Because you've told so many strong ones? Pardon me for not coming down sooner. I was having a little cry. You see, I haven't been spanked since I was a little girl. I got a present for you, Corny. My half the deal. You may have the entire informer's fee from the Internal Revenue Department. I don't want any of it. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> Mike. Mike. I apologize.
there's something I forgot. Just a minute. Sure helps, don't it? Sure does. 